PhD graduates in Victoria. I would like to invite Dr. Sunny Chandra. He has graduated from IIT Kanpur, followed by MSc Honours from Queen's University, Canada. And he has a successful professional career in IT senior management positions spanning nearly four decades. He established Chandra Enterprises Private Limited in 1984, subsequently becoming the first Indian Australian to establish an Australian IT company making a cloud-based database management solution called JobMax for job network providers across Australia. So he's going to talk about visa pathways for PhD graduates to Victoria. Please. Can we just go back one to see your uh, demonstration? Yeah. Just the the background one. Mm. No, no, the background you are, the oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. logo, your logo. Yeah. Yeah. That, 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 let's just stop there for a second. Sure. You see, first of all, those of you who've got the agenda know that my talk was supposed to finish at eight o'clock and Raja Ravi is going to kick me out in a minute. But <laughs> so I should finish, no? <laughs> finish. You see, it is like that welcome sign. Guess what's going to happen to it when the water comes in? Gone, no? That's going to be the thrust of my talk in a few minutes. Australia puts out a big welcome sign for you. <laughs> right? But it's like a writing in the sand. And the tidal wave of the visa comes on top of it. <laughs> Can I come to my talk? <laughs> so... I want to introduce to you Jeevan Preet. She's my colleague in my business. And Jeevan Preet has got a degree in IT from India, and she's got a degree in uh, migration law and practice, and she's enrolled for a law degree at the university. So it reminds me of a story. Einstein was once asked for a conference, give a talk, and he got fed up. He said, I give this talk all the time. So he got his colleague, the chauffeur, not chauffeur, to dress up and go and stand at the podium, and he put on the chauffeur's hat and sat in the back. He said, you just give the talk. It's all written down, slides. That was done. At the end of it, somebody asked a question. He said, uh, Professor Einstein, I have this question. Now the poor chauffeur standing there, he said, he said, such a simple question, I'll refer it to my chauffeur in the back. <laughs> so if there's a question from you that I can't answer, she will answer. Thank you for Now, th that's just my journey. I just want to tell you something, and thank you for that introduction. I came here in 1975, long time back. I'm second batch IIT Kanpur. So almost all of you IIT people, should give me a farshi. But I am amazed at the <clears throat> number of people who are assembled here. I'm really in awe of you guys. This is a fantastic group, and your expertise and intelligence, I, I will do farshi to you. And one thing it reminds me of, Kabir once wrote, Chal, sorry for the Hindi, I'll translate it. Chalti chakki deh ke Dia Kabira Roy. Seeing the Chakki, you know, you, everybody's seeing those two stones. Chalti Chakki Dekh Ke Dia Kabira Roy. Doi Patan Ke Beach Me Sabut Bachana Koi. Between those two, a rock and a hard place, nobody was left whole. So you are in between a job or career and the visa. <laughs> Right? Watch out. So <clears throat> that that I'll talk about that. And I want to talk now about <clears throat> how many of you are thinking about a PR visa for Australia? Please raise your hands. 
One, two. No, raise it. I can't see your Buddha arc. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Rest of you can go. Seriously, why you're here? Listen to me. Right? <laughs> Seriously, if you're not interested in a visa, go to sleep. But those who are interested, please listen. Of those who are interested, how many of your people will complete, or everybody will complete your PhD within four years? Keep it up. Wow. All who will complete in three years? Three years, two years, one year, well done. These are the stalwarts, you know, ready to go out. Excellent. <clears throat> now, the next question is, how many of you are in engineering related disciplines, IT, any other, C civil engineering? That's engineering. <laughs> it, the, and you don't, I joined IIT Bombay in 1916, civil engineering. Why? Because my father said, your grandfather was a civil engineer from Roorkee. He has joined Roorkee when it was Thompson College. He said, you will also be a civil engineer. They tried changed, but then. So have you checked, is your future vocation on the list of occupations for a permanent residence visa. This is very important. If you're looking for a visa, you have to get your skill to align with the list of occupations, right? Yes. That keeps on changing every time. Somebody once said you have to keep on publishing, right? Yeah. You have to keep on looking the rules for a PR. It keeps on changing. Every three months, write in your diary, I've got to publish one article and I've got to look my PR rules. <laughs> Do it seriously, my caro. Keep on changing. Have you tested your point score? How many people have checked for their point score? Hands up. I am going home here. <laughs> are these guys serious or not? Huh? I think they are so opportunistic. I mean, they are not the one who wanted PR, they are so well settled. Yeah, they are relaxed. Huh? They are relaxed. They or probably got PRs. How many of you got a PR already? Raise hand. One, two. How many citizens? No. Well, yes. Warning. Citizenship rules are going to change. Mr. Dutton's coming back as minister today. Now, you must check your point score. It's on the website. Google karte hai All of you are Googlers. Points test Australia. It'll come up. Check your point score. There are self checkers. You need minimum 65 points. Yes, sir. It used to be 60 till July. Yeah. Badhati rehti hai. Second question Is your student visa valid for at least six months post your PhD? Have you checked? PhD completion letter, not submitting of thesis. Have you checked that? What is the amount of time normally taken between submission of thesis and completion letter? Can somebody tell me? Six months. More than four months. Check it. Because if your visa expires, no use you are saying, I submitted my PhD thesis. You will have a, well, there's two options. There's a Sunday flight and a Wednesday flight. Direct non-stop air India. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, anybody here in country other than India? From? Uh, from Bhutan. From Bhutan. Wonderful country. <laughs> Happiness index in Bhutan. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. All right. Oh, this what was it? Okay, yeah, yeah. Everybody has heard of different sorts of visas, you know, PR, TR, you know. But I have a different option. I'll tell you at the end so that you keep awake. Huh? Do you, 
who people think they are innovative, entrepreneurial people. Don't want professors. Entrepreneurial, innovative people with some passionate idea. I'll give you something at the end. I'll give you something at the end. I, if you have an idea to be, be a cook, or be a fashion designer, or be a music DJ, or anything, passion, some idea, there is a visa for you. Uh -huh. Wonderful, I'll come to it. Okay, now we do the usual stuff. You heard of all of this. Jeevan Preet, these are the ones now? Yes, sir. So it's a journal skills migration. So, you know, all of you or any of you, the people who are actually interested into getting the permanent residency for Australia. So, you know, there are these three visas basically. 189, which is a permanent residency. 190, again, permanent residency. And 489, which is a regional or a designated area. So there's a difference between regional areas and the designated area. So For Melbourne example, is a designated area. Whole Victoria is a designated area. But before going on to these visas, you might need to get on to 485. So mm -hmm. this 485 is your graduate skill temporary visa. So you know that uh, time when you have already submitted your thesis, but you have not got your completion letter yet. The six months. The six months. So this visa normally is from two to four years for PhD graduates. So it gives you a chance to get the industrial experience because for all these three visas, which leads to permanent residency or are permanent residency visas, you need to have a skill assessment. No matters you have done PhD, you completed, but there are different assessing authorities. Engineering Australia needs I'll to come to that. I'll come to it. I'll come to it. And if once you apply for a visa, make sure you're in Australia the day you apply for a visa. Then only you get a bridging visa. I've got five minutes. So here is the first thing. I'll just race through this because you'll probably get copies of this presentation. So speed reading. Get them assessed. Lodge an expression of interest. Select your occupation and stream. You might, if you, you know, get a state nomination if you don't have enough points and you apply for a visa. And then you wait. It could be long wait. Very long wait. Getting longer. The queue for PRs now is 72,000 people. The numbers being allocated is less than 7,000. If you were a parent, it is lucky. If you were a parent, applied for parent visa, what's the waiting time? 40 years, 30 years. Can you imagine? By that time, you can't call me over. Are you a highly skilled professional or tradesperson and strong, interested man. in moving to Melbourne or Victoria? If you have a skill that's in demand, the Victorian government can nominate you to support your visa application. Think of nomination as visa sponsorship. It's endorsement for your visa application. It's like bonus points. There are two types of visas that the Victorian government can nominate you for. There's the skilled nominated subclass 190 visa, and then there's the skilled regional provisional subclass 489 visa. Let's start with the skilled nominated subclass 190 visa and take you through four easy steps that Amit took to apply for visa nomination. Amit knew he wanted to move to Melbourne, so the first thing he did was... Okay, I'll stop there because you can go to the Victorian government website and you can see that yourself. Now, I just, you know, and I mean, I really like what uh, Vashishta said. Don't get in a tunnel. Get out of it. You have to really work out where you want to be and, and get there. So, you have to check of these factors. Particularly, what is involved for you? Are you looking at that? Or are you thinking of that? Or do you want to also bring your parents? What? There are a lot of factors to think about. And there are questions like this in most cases. 
Can I launch my visa application as soon as I finish? He said, no. You have to wait 12 weeks for nomination approval. Ah, that's a good thing. Victoria government gives streamline, no? Yes, sir. They guarantee you two weeks will or respond to you. Only PhD graduates only. That invitation comes within a two weeks. Do you need work experience? No. Again, it's waived. Because they say you're working already on your PhD thesis. We don't have work experience. You have to get by skills assist. You may think not, but it's compulsory. More. What about my spouse? How many people here married? Got a partner? Oh, wow. So that's pretty good, huh? How many of you living de facto? Put up your hands all of them. You can get visas for that. But remember if you are married, your dependents can get full work rights. But if your children are over 18, and I don't think anyone of their children would be over 18. <laughs> if your parents are here, check about the uh, visa. You can do something called a vivo. Usually cover. Google it here. Easy. You can check your visa entitlements and that of your parents. Put in their passport number, date of birth. Yes. What is a point score? Here is a typical point score. Age, PhD, in proficient English is 7 each. Seven each. You can get up to 20 points, 8 each. Australian study, that comes only 65 points. But you need 75 to 80 to get an invitation to get a visa. You get extra points for a whole stack of other things. You know, living in regional area and accredited in community language. All those who want Punjabi as a second language and so on. This is a new. I told you there's another visa. This is a really rarely known visa. If you've got any innovators here, Melbourne University has got billions of dollars. CSIR has. All they have to do is commit to your idea $200,000. And in the first 12 months, all they have to give you is $20,000 in cash. And you can have three partners, and all of you get a visa. Batao? Anyone heard of this? Anyone heard of this visa? No. I do my research, no? That's why IIT people are always one rung away above the others. It'll, there's a pathway. There are 160 different visa classes. It's the second largest legislation in Australia. Guess which is the first one? Not family law. Tax. It's just as complicated. And it changes. We have very lots of traps. We get my consultancy deals only with the $10 haircuts. We fix the $10 haircuts. You heard the story? There's a barber. He had a, a barber shop charging $20. Opened up across the road, another barber. Put up a sign, $10. People are going there. One day one chap came from there. Can you fix my haircut? I said, why? You had it cut there? He said, yeah, but look at it. Oh. So he put up a sign. We fix $10 haircuts. Charge 25 bucks. That's what my company does. We f and we see so many people Today, why you got a bit late coming, sorry. I had one person from Germany, I had one person from Nepal. Both of them had visa problems, visa refused, gone to tribunal, looking at the end of the tunnel. That's it. You're getting 20 points. So you 
cannot deliver experience which you have gained before doing the PhD. So it needs to be after PhD. So people who are doing in IT, for example. So ACS basic requirements, if you have an Australian qualifications, you need to have a one year experience in IT company. After so the PhD. After the PhD. So <coughs> that experience could be properly in some company or you can go for the professional view. Same for the, in, but it's quite different with the engineering in Australia. If you have studied from the Australia, so only they need is your completion letter. They don't ask Civil for engineer. The they don't ask for <coughs> the experience. By the way, the ex-president of Engineers Australia is lady from IIT Bombay. So be thankful IIT Bombay. Hmm. That's not a work experience. I'm, I'm not saying it's not work, but it's not work. Which is before the post your PhD. Then you cannot claim that extra five points of PhD. You would be claiming the 15 points of uh, so called your masters, not 20 of PhD. So work experience which you gained after completing your studies, either bachelor's, master's, or PhD, is counted. You know, no, Listen, I think we've got to stop so there because we... Yeah. So the question is that like, would that be counted as work experience because it is. Yeah. Okay. It is. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 so it is. Yeah. So, yeah. But it depends and, I, and we won't take any more on this because it's very detailed. Mm -hmm. But it will depend what your post of work is. And you, you have to see what classification does it fall under. Is it plumber? Electrician? HR manager, managing director, station master. There's 172. Look for it. If you are postdoc works in it, it fits. I want to stop there. There was another question. So, uh, I want to know more about your entrepreneurial visa, which you mentioned. Yes. The details and uh, part of my understanding, but um, to, to be called an entrepreneur, do you, do you need to have a, a, a limited company on your team? No, no. You have to have. And an idea. I was just wondering how, how, how the documentation would go. We don't have time, but yes, you can contact us. Contact you and please get an appointment. Uh, if you have a patient from Australia in engineering, it doesn't matter which stream you're from. It doesn't matter what stream you're from. No, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. But once you've done the PhD and you've got the 220 points, then it matters what occupation you want to be in. If you've done your PhD in lactating properties of milk, of milk supposing, something like that, no? what is your occupation after that? All the panel has always talked about is industry interaction. True? So where, which industry will you get a job? Where are you going for your one year experience? To okay. Amul Dairy? We're talking about your application. So your application, you can just nominate any occupation if you have a PhD from Australia. No, I'm sorry. Yes, I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry. Can you repeat your question? Any PhD candidate who has a qualification in engineering from Australian University can nominate Okay. 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 Yes. Australian side. Absolutely. Yes. So that is a condition. Yes. Yes. It's actually different in general Australian to the ACA. So that that is a very major difference where students get into trouble. We have a lot of cases like this. So, in general, in Australia, simply states that you are from Washington and the end of the day yeah. Okay, you have no conditions like that. But ACS do have. ACS goes by the unit subjects you have studied in all those. Your question is, if I've got it correctly, if having done a PhD, you feel you can nominate any occupation. We have a difference of opinion. We leave it. Okay, now any other questions? No? Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Sandra. Thank you.